Uh, hi, and uh, welcome to Global Sports Care. Today, I've got a special guest and also a special subject to speak about, and that's injury prevention. And not injury prevention uh, for everything, but of a special sport, which is futsal. And futsal is a growing sport in the world, and I think one of the most fantastic sports uh, out there. And I've got my friend, uh, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Marcos. Thanks for having me here. Danny, do you mind um, telling um, what you do um, and what your interests are? And um, you're at the moment in California. Um, a little bit about yourself. Yes, definitely. So my name is Daniel Verdejo del Fresno. I was born um, in Spain, but then I moved to England to do my PhD. I did a PhD in exercise and sports science uh, with Manchester Metropolitan University. And I started to work for the FA. I met you over there and we, we, we spent very good years working together with the England Futsal National Team. I spent eight years in England. And then in 2016, I moved um, to, to uh, here to the US, to California. I had a good opportunity to I so I decided um, I decided to to take it. As you said, I, I like futsal as well. I grew up in Spain, so we play futsal over there. I was working in in futsal in England, and I am working in futsal here in the US. So I think that 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 is why you said that I am an expert, but I don't know about that. <laughs> and um, yes, you want to tell us a little bit about um, the science of prevention of football. Obviously, me as a doctor, you, you treat people, but I think it's more important that, that you actually avoid injury. And as futsal is growing, I think we need to promote um, a little bit of injury prevention. Yes, definitely, definitely. So I, I, I prepare a little presentation with when uh, after, after we talk, and I will cover the main characteristics of futsal, then some scientific studies about injuries, injuries in futsal, and then the main, the main uh, ways to try to prevent injuries to happen in the sport. Okay, off we go. Okay, so let me, let me share the screen. Okay, and then we can start. Okay. So, can you see the screen, doctor? Good, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to talk about the incident of injuries in futsal. And um, the first thing we, we should analyze is the sport. So we should analyze the main characteristics uh, or the profile of the sport, in this case, futsal. And then the second part that is very, very important is to analyze the, the profile of uh, the players. The play, of every single player because that's that's one of the ways to basically understand way better the sport and our 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 roster our squad so futsal is a five versus five game it is in the high level it is played indoor but could be played outdoor the court is 40 by 20 meters so it's a bit it's a bit bigger court than a basketball one okay so we play five versus five in a bit bigger court than uh, basketball. And like in basketball, when the ball goes out, the clock stops. We play two halves of 20 minutes, but with those stoppage times, at the end, a futsal game uh, has a duration about of 87 minutes, okay? As you can see here, 87 minutes, then 10 minutes half time. So we have a ratio work rest very, very similar to one, uh, one. It's 50, 50, 50% 50 of the time you are playing, 50% of the time you are resting or the ball, or the game is stopped because the ball is out. If we now analyze the playing intervals, as you can see here, the 75% of the time, the, the, the interval of the game is between one to 18 seconds. After, a, after 18 seconds, the ball is out, so the game stops. And then the resting intervals, so when the ball is out, until we play again the ball, the 83% of the time is between one to 15 seconds. 
So as you can see, again, the, the ratio of working resting is very, very similar to one one. However, this is very, very important. Futsal is a very, very intense game. So when we are playing, when we are on the court, over the 85% of the time that we are on the court, we have a very, very high, high uh, heart rate, super, super high, as you can see on the graph. And the average, the average of um, our heart rate is over uh, 174 beats per minute. So as you can see, when a player in futsal is on the court, um, is working very, very, in, very, very intense. So much intensity, so much sprints, so many chain of directions. And there is no time, like for example, in football, to walk or to rest if the ball is on the other side of the court. Just to really, really sum up, general, general, uh, general characteristics. Most of the actions and the resting periods are around 15 seconds. Usually there is four pauses in one minute. And the ratio, the ratio of work is um, one to one with about 15 seconds working, 15 seconds resting. So high intensity, high intensity sport with very, very brief periods um, of time to rest. And then usually a player, a player cover four and a half kilometers per game. But the thing is the 50% of those kilometers, they are at high intensity. So with all this background about the general characteristics about the sport, if we now analyze the injuries, we can see here a table that I designed. If we analyze the incident, incident uh, rate of injuries, so basically the number of injuries that happens per 1,000 hours, we can see here that there is, you know, the studies, they are not very, very conclusive because the numbers, they are very, very different. We, we can compare here those two studies that they are super, super different in numbers. Some studies, they only consider the training hours. Some studies, they consider the match hours. So there is no much science conclusive about the incident rate. If we analyze now where, where the injuries um, happen, Basically, number one is the ankle. All the studies, they have a high rate, a high percentage of ankle injuries. The second one should be the knee. So we have ankle first, knee second, and then on third place, we have thighs, groins, and hips. That area is the third, the third injury location in futsal players in almost all the studies. If we now go into how the injuries, um, which, which kind of injuries we have, the main, the, the, main, the main injury is ankle sprains or sprains. Then we have muscle strains. And the last one is contusions. And if we analyze how the injuries happened. If we go here on the last column, again, we have differences, big differences between studies. We cannot really say that most of the injuries happened on uh, non-contact actions or contact actions, because depending on the study, we can see that the percentage are completely different. So for me, just to sum up futsal's injuries, ankle is number one, the knee is number two, the thigh is number three, and then we have also hips very, very close with groins around. Sprains are the type of injury number one, strains are the number two, and then we have the contusions at number three. It seems seems that girls, they have more injuries than boys, but it's not also conclusive. And then about the contact injury or no contact injury, we can see this video here about if futsal is a contact 
or not contact. Futsal is a contact sport, uh, but there is there is studies like leaning towards most of the injuries happen through contact. As you can see on this video, there is a concussion on the player on, 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 on blue when, when the player hit the, hit, the, hit the ground. But at the same time, we have so many studies that they say that most of the injuries um, happen uh, without uh, contact. So we cannot really define if in futsal contact or non-contact injuries are the main, the main, uh, the main cause of them. Okay. This is something that in the future, I think, doctor, we, we, we should analyze or futsal is a new sport. There are not many studies in futsal. So science needs to, needs to keep working on this. And then something very, very interesting that it has been happening in the last, in the last years, let's say five, six, in the last five, six years. And some of the, some of the experts they are trying to analyze and they are even calling ACL pandemic in futsal or is like the number of injuries, the number of injuries that uh, happen in futsal on ACLs, on ACLs. So on this video we have, I just, I just put together some injuries on ACL, uh, on ACLs. On different um, on different players and something that is very very interesting is that some of them some of those injuries happen because of contact others there is no contact at all it's just uh, the player completely alone and another interesting thing is that some of those players for example lozano or for example uh, mati rosa lozano suffer in three years, two injuries on the same injury. And Mati Rosa, for example, had two injuries in less than 15, 16 months, one on the right knee and the other one on the left knee. So the ACL is something that I really think as a futsal, futsal expert, we should start analyzing, studying, and see if there is any pattern or if there is something that um, something that we can do with our futsal players to basically uh, prevent uh, those kind of injuries. So and, this one, for example, is the Sergio Lozano second one. And Daniel, Doctor, yes. when it changed five years ago that people got more ACL injuries, did anything change in the sport? Did it get more athletic, more... Um, yeah, more any changes in, in during this time? I think honestly that um, futsal, as you said at the beginning, is a growing sport. And as a growing sport, that means that the, the game is developing. And yes, I agree with you. Uh, the sport is becoming more professional. And because it's becoming more professional in all, of, in all of the countries, the players, they are training more. So that means that the players, they are faster, stronger. And then the game, the game is becoming a bit more physical. Yeah. I don't know if that is the reason. But yes, definitely the game is becoming way more physical than years ago. Well, that uh, similar similarities to rugby where this happened there as well. So if it gets more physical, this could be one reason. But yes, probably needs to be analyzed uh, academically a bit better. Exactly, because also maybe the shoes, the, the type of floor that the players are playing could, ha could also have some, some impact on the rate of injuries. But we don't really know. OK. So with all this background about injuries, the the main idea for strength and conditioning coaches, for uh, sports scientists, is to try to create programs with the players to prehabilitate them. So basically to make sure that they are in good conditions to avoid those injuries. And the main, the main ones is to do those proprioception exercises or those balance exercises. 
Another one is to have uh, a strong, a very, very strong core. So all the core stability exercises are very, very important. And then finally, for those, the, for those injuries on the thigh, most of them, they are hamstring, hamstring injuries. As you can see here, uh, Asklin in 2013, develop the, this, um, this hamstring protocol. And I think it's something that we should uh, implement to basically prevent players to have injuries. Also, strengthening. This, this is um, the program that, for example, uh, UEFA, the, um, UEFA um, recommends in the UEFA futsal coaching manual that they have. This is the this is the this is the the strengthening the gym the gym program that they recommend for the futsal players. Then I really think that uh, uh, phone rolling phone rolling is super important to release to release uh, muscles and there are so many studies about the the benefits. And then finally stretching. Even there is some. The, even there is some, you know, controversy about when, how to stretch, but go to your to your place, analyze your players, and then implement this kind of of, of uh, protocols, adapting them to your characteristics of the players, the environment, and everything. And finally, and I think this is super important, doctor. Everybody knows the FIFA the FIFA 11 plus. Um, Protocol basically it is um, it is a, a warm up program to prevent injuries in football. It is developed by FIFA. There is uh, so many studies behind that, and basically it was it was developed and study and apply in football. That is the protocol, but also recently there are some some researchers and universities. That they have, they have applied this um, this FIFA 11 uh, plus football warm up into futsal. But there are two. I think here is important. There are two 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 ways. This is a warm up to prevent injuries. So if we try to implement this to improve fitness, the studies say that. The FIFA 11 plus does not alter physical performance of amateur futsal players. So the protocol does not improve the fitness. We have another another one here that basically they say the same that is not basically making any impact on proprioception or balance in short or long term efforts, and also is not improving the knee muscle strength. So if we want to apply this, just as a way to improve fitness, the study says that it doesn't work. However, it, it, is, it is working perfectly if we apply this to as a strategy to prevent injuries in youth futsal players. So there is a study over there that they really, they really found that the protocol, and it's, it was performed in, in 2014, I think it was in uh, Iran, and basically with youth players, FIFA 11 prevented the number of injuries. Also, um, in uh, Portugal, there is a guy that is applying this with senior players, amateur senior players, and again, as you can see here, it's a very recent study. I think it's from last year or this year. Um, the application of the FIFA 11 protocol basically reduced reduced the number of injuries um, in the in the lower in the lower limbs during during the season in uh, amateur futsal players and this the same the same group the same group basically they they seen that it seems reasonable to suggest the use of the FIFA 11 plus to their to the reduce the injury risk in futsal players. So what would you say then in amateur futsal players, generally, would you recommend them to do the FIFA 11 plus or would you alter it a little bit? So 
the studies, the, the studies, they say that yes, in youth and in amateur futsal players, the FIFA 11 plus works. So yes, I would, uh, I would definitely recommend it. Um, however, we don't have studies yet if this works in professional futsal players because nobody, nobody has had access to implement the program in a professional environment yet. But I would really recommend it, definitely, no doubt, doctor. And then I think it's something very important that also to prevent injuries, to control and monitor the players. That is what, at the beginning of this presentation, I said about, we know the sport, but also we have to know our players. So we can, we can monitor the recovery and regeneration points that players they can get, analyzing the nutrition, the hydration, the, the number of hours that they sleep, if they are relaxed or they have stress. Then it is important basically to ask um, how they feel. So with a very simple RPE uh, scale, those are very, very simple methods that everybody can apply on your own uh, club. You can, if you have a bit more technology, you can analyze the urine osmolality, or you can just analyze the urine to know if they are hydrated or not. And then I think, as you remember, we implemented that in England, but also when I was working for Libya, there are three tests that we have been doing, uh, sit and reach, squeeze, and counter movement jump. And basically we, we did that every morning and we are not really analyzing the performance of the players on those tests. What we see is the trend. We want to see if the players, they are basically keeping the same numbers every day or if they are tired and their performance on the three tests goes down because they are uh, stiff or because they have problems on the groin, so because their muscle, their their muscles are tired. And then there is another test, which is the ankle dorsiflexion test, as you can see on the picture. That it has been very, very the correlations between the performance on this test and the risk to suffer an injury is quite high. So. Controlling and monitoring the players could, I think, help to prevent all this overtraining or overload muscle injuries. Of course, we are talking about the non-contact injuries because the contact ones, we cannot, we cannot really do anything with those. But if we can reduce some injuries, you know, they are more than, it's more than welcome to, to reduce some injuries. So, to finish, yes. Uh, when we come back to the, I, I think with the urine osmolality explain, I think you do this because uh, there are studies which show that um, if you're not well hydrated, you do bad decisions and you are more likely to come into uh, trouble with uh, contact injuries, isn't it? Correct, correct. So of course we had, we, we were lucky because we had this uh, device, but if you educate, if you don't have the device, the debate, you can educate the players just analyzing their own color when they go to the bathroom, basically. I think it's, it's key that we educate players, but yes, it, it, that was the reason. Keep hydrated, yeah. Yes, keep hydrated. Anything from here, doctor? <laughs> no, thank you. No, okay. So just to finish very, very quick, as a general, in futsal, the lower limb, is, is where most injuries happen, but ankle, knee, hips, and thighs are the specific locations. The type of injuries, sprain, strain, and contusions. It seems, it seems, but there is no conclusive studies that female athletes, female players, they have more injuries than um, male. I don't really know the reasons. I can give you my opinion. I think is. Do you, do you know which which injuries? Do you know, uh, obviously, in, in female football uh, players have more ACL injuries. Uh, was this looked at in, in futsal? What injuries were more? It is exactly the same. 
uh, AC, knee injuries and ACLs they are they are quite high in female futsal players. Okay, so similar. and I think I think one of the reasons could be because um, futsal female futsal is not as professional as male futsal. So the demands of the sport they are very similar, but if the players they are less fit or they train less or you know what I mean. Maybe that, could, maybe that could be one of the reasons. Then this is something important. There is no differences between the positions. So, you know, in futsal, there are basically um, four positions, like the goalkeeper, the backman, the two wingers, and the pivot. There are not big differences in between positions or in between injuries regarding the position. And there is no a clear cause versus contact versus non-contact. Uh, ACLs is something that, as I mentioned, in the last five, six years, it has been increasing. And I really think that, that all the prehabilitation routines, core proprioception, hamstring, and a general body strengthening program should be implemented in, um, in all the players. The FIFA 11 plus design for football, in my opinion, should be implemented also in futsal because the studies in youth and amateur players show that it works. And also, I think controlling and monitor players with different with different tests or with different tools to educate them and to try to individualize individualize their training load could also help to reduce the number of injuries in futsal. So if you want, I can stop sharing my screen now, and then we can have a dialogue here, or I don't know if you have any question. Yes, I think, you know, um, when you looked at all the research regarding injury prevention, what is quite interesting is that um, most of the injuries are ankle. Are there any specific ankle protocols or strengthening protocols uh, where there's been some research to prevent injury? So most of the injuries in ankles usually are ankle sprains. There is no specific studies applied to futsal players. Of course, there are so many uh, protocols to recover from an ankle sprain, but there is nothing specific on just futsal players. So that would be probably something which um might be something to research or implement next to all the other things you said. Yes, yes, there, there is, in my opinion, there is so many things that right now in futsal could be uh, could be a study or could be a research because, as I said, it's new sport, it's growing, so we need more, we need more science. And I think the other thing um, which we obviously discussed in the past is because of the difference of the sport being more high intensity sport, um, the value of making your players more fit in high intensity exercises, yeah, which also yes. might reduce um, injuries. Definitely, I think that that, that, that could be key. Uh, as, we, as we saw at the beginning of the presentation, futsal is a high intensity, intensity intermittent sport. So the training that we do should be in that direction. So heat sessions should be should be implemented, and I think also futsal is is, is futsal is is play is played in a in a hard surface. So the training should be also on a hard surface surface because mm. that because your body is is basically adapting to the sport. Yeah. So I think. Uh, what I basically, when I want to put it all together, I think, you know, it says take home messages for amateur futsal players. So people, you know, who, who don't do this professionally, but love to play um, on a weekend, you know, with, with their mates, some futsal and during the week train a little bit. What would he say? You know, do the F FIFA 11 plus and then that's the minimum they should do? Yes, definitely. For me, the FIFA 11, if, if, you, if you look into detail, you have basically everything there. So you have a bit of strengthening, you have a bit of proprioception, a bit of balance, a bit of hamstrings. It's very quick. 
So for those amateur players that they 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 just train a bit during the week and then they play during the weekend one game, just spend 15 minutes before the the game or the session warming up, performing the FIFA 11 plus. Okay, and then if we go to the professionals, what would you say is is they are the most important? Would you say get them fitter, get them stronger, and um, you need to survey them to, to see if, if they're not too tired? Or what would you say is the take home message there? So if we go into the professional, the professional environment, the first thing is we have to analyze the profile of each player. So we can individualize their, 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 their needs. And yes, some player maybe need to improve the core, some player the hamstrings, some players strengthening, but individualize their fitness, individualize their fitness requirements. That is one. And the second one, try to control their training load and they, I would say, the invisible training, the routines that they do outside training, like uh, behaviors, habits, sleeping, eating, drinking, that helps definitely. Mm. Well, I, I would say it's a great, great overview, Danny. And I think um, well, number one is I, I will put your contact details um, obviously um, at the bottom of the, the video. And um, also, you know, if anybody's interested to do some research in futsal, I'm sure uh, Danny and myself are happy to help and advise um, because we think the sport should be put a bit more um, onto the front line and hopefully at some point it will be more popular like it is in Spain and in other countries. Um, is there anything else you, you want to uh, mention? No, yes, uh, of course. Thank you very much for having me here. And we know that we love futsal and everything helps to try to develop the sport. So thank you for, for this uh, initiative. Thank you for this opportunity, uh, Marcus. Well, thank you. And um, let's hope we see more of futsal um, in the future. Thank you. Yeah, bring across. Thank you.